Selenium is great, but can you take too much? Well, let's find out. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Patel Show, where we help people find answers who have chronic health conditions, chronic health problems. And today we want to talk about selenium. And you've probably heard of selenium. Maybe you've taken selenium. Maybe you're taking it currently. Selenium is a trace mineral. It's actually an essential trace mineral, meaning that we need to get some in on a regular basis because our body can't make it on its own. And uh, many times it's not the easiest to always uh, get from our diet unless you eat certain things that we're going to talk about. So let's uh, let's do um, talk about it a little bit more. All right. So selenium, it is used in over 25 different proteins in the body, especially uh, also used in many, many um, enzymes in the body that are uh, it, it allows enzymes to work properly, which either break things apart or help put things together. Extremely important because that's how we actually, that's one of the ways we live is we have to make enzymes from our DNA. All right, so what's it really important for? It's important for the immune system. And there's interesting research on a lot of these on how it affects the immune system, um, how it affects uh, cellular communication. Um, actually, the, our cells talk to each other and selenium has an effect on that. Uh, and then antioxidant. So selenium helps to prevent oxidation, slow the aging process, um, prevent damage from all these oxidants that come via our food or our outside world. So pretty important there. Also, it supports the production of the mother of all antioxidants called glutathione. You can watch our glutathione video if you get a chance. And then... Um, also involved in DNA synthesis and repair. So things that damage our DNA potentially, yeah, selenium's involved in repairing that damage. So pretty neat stuff. Let's uh, look at a little more of selenium and, and uh, what it's involved in. So selenium uh, can also be very anti-inflammatory. Like I said, also it's an antioxidant. Um, antiviral. There's actually some really good studies with selenium and how it helps the immune system. And then selenium uh, can also, there's actually research on showing it's help with cancer. Uh, and also it's help with people who are going through chemotherapy or radiation support. So very interesting as selenium is applied to those and not, you don't hear much about that. And then also a really important one here um, that maybe you've heard of or not, which is T4 to T3 conversion. What's that? So there's another video I have, if you get a chance to watch on thyroid hormones and T4 and T3, you'll learn more on that. But basically our thyroid makes mainly T4. Over 90% of what our thyroid makes is this inactive form of thyroid hormone called T4. And that has to turn into this form called T3. And it's that T3 that actually goes to your cells to give you metabolism. So it's extremely important that you convert the T4 to T3. And selenium is a major component of that. So many times doctors may um, say, hey, your thyroid hormones will look normal. And all they looked at was your TSH and your T4, if you look at your blood work. And rarely do they look at your T3 levels. Because if your T3 levels are low, your total T3, your free T3, Many times this can be caused by a selenium deficiency. Also, it's involved in uh, helping people who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is actually a blood sugar issue, um, but that activates an enzyme in the ovaries that off levels your estrogen progesterone balance or turns your estrogen into testosterone and can create a kind of a whole list of symptoms. But selenium can help with that. And again, it's not like, hey, you take your selenium and it cures everything, but it just, it definitely has been found in the research to support when people have issues. Another important thing is cardiovascular disease. So basically, it's a, selenium is a major antioxidant. So it's going to help prevent damage to the heart and arteries and prevent uh, inflammation and, uh, and, and oxidation from affecting the arteries as much. 
Also, same kind of similar scenario here. It's also going to do that same thing, have an antioxidant effect, anti-inflammatory effect on the brain. Uh, also involved in helping people who have diabetes type 2. Um, and then another one here also, benign uh, prostatic hypertrophy, BP, BPH, which happens in men. Prostate gets swollen or inflamed, uh, and it's benign. What can help? Well, selenium has been shown to help with that. And this is also a very interesting one here that's been shown that when people take selenium who have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, that's where your immune system attacks your thyroid gland, and now you have autoimmune thyroid issues, um, thyroid destruction going on. And one of the antibodies that's related to Hashimoto's is called TPO, thyroid peroxidase. And people who have taken selenium or who have good selenium levels tend to be able to decrease those antibody levels. So very, very interesting. So let's let's even um, find out a little more here because, you know, what happens if you take too much selenium? Can you get symptoms? Well, yeah, you know, it, it's, you know, you want you want the right amount of, of a lot of things, you know, any in moderation. All right. So uh, what can happen with too much? Well, you can get hair loss, you can get fatigue, you can get GI symptoms, joint pain, brittle nails. A lot of these sound like low thyroid symptoms. Yeah. So if you take too much selenium, you could potentially, this is a possibility, over convert your T4 into T3. Now your T3 levels go too high and now you have too much thyroid hormone, T3 in your bloodstream. It oversaturates your cells and that can actually cause low thyroid symptoms despite you're not taking extra thyroid hormone or you're, you're just you're getting too much selenium. But of course, these side effects can come from different routes, too. So you don't want too much of this stuff, but also you want enough uh, because the other side of that story is not enough. And you also get low thyroid symptoms and some of these other symptoms. Actually, the symptoms are almost the same either way. So you want to dial that in just right now. If can you get it from foods? Absolutely, some, um, not a whole lot. Now, Brazil nuts, yeah, you can get a good. That's pro they're probably the highest is Brazil nuts. But the thing is, is Brazil nuts also contain what's called phytic acid, and sometimes phytic phytic acid can prevent the absorption of selenium in the gut. So a lot of times, you know, people will tell you, hey, soak your Soak your um, Brazil nuts in water for a little bit before you eat them. And sometimes that'll offset the phytic acid and neutralize it some. And then meats, pretty much any meat's going to have selenium, eggs, um, like a brewer's yeast. yeast. So, um, so yeah, so some from foods. Uh, and that's, you know, if people have good absorption, good gut, no big deal. They're probably absorbing and, and good diet. Let's put it that way. You're probably getting uh, a good amount. But if you're not, if you have um, thyroid issue, Hashimoto's, chronic health condition, things like that, you've got a lot of gut inflammation, you may not be getting enough. So it's good to, to kind of find out on that. And if not, the best form to take is called selenomethionine. Uh, this supplement is the activated form of selenium. So it, this is going to be the best form. It's going to absorb real easily. You're going to absorb over 90% of what you take. So an excellent way to get this in. And then um, what's the dosage on this? Usually about 100 to 200 micrograms. Very important on the micrograms. And that's probably about average dosage that we'll use with patients. Now, you know, if you look up what's the RDA for selenium, they'll say it's 55 micrograms usually. Yeah, well... If you're absorbing really well and you have no health issues and you're taking a really good form, maybe. All right. Now, here's the thing, though, is, is if people over time say, hey, I'm going to bump this up. I'm going to start taking uh, 400 micrograms, 600 micrograms. Uh, so I read, read some website that said the more, the better. Or if some people are taking their multivitamin containing selenium and their other vitamin containing selenium, and then they decide to take the selenium with any too. You may be getting more sources in than you need. So this could even cause some problems too. And what they found is if you do 
take way too much, and I'm talking a lot of selenium, over time, uh, this could increase your risk for diabetes. Um, and it could um, oh, cause you to have hair loss, uh, which again, kind of interesting because the hair loss is that thyroid, that low thyroid symptom. So uh, that's where I feel that's coming from the diabetes risk, you know, um, iffy on the research showing that, but it does say it. So, all right. Well, hopefully that gave everybody some um, great information on selenium and uh, how uh, it really is a pretty amazing trace uh, mineral that, uh, or you could even call it a trace element that you can take in. But um, hopefully that gave you some really good info and have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll see you next time. All right. God bless.